what you said a few minutes ago, you said, you know, your approach when you are talking with a patient, maybe for the first time you ask many questions and then also do the physical examination. Why or how is it actually connected childhood trauma or something that happened in childhood with chronic pain that we are experiencing now? Because perhaps people right now are thinking, well, you know what? I had an injury. I have this chronic pain, but what is my, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 years ago trauma no. has anything to do with what I'm experiencing right now? Well, there's, there's a term that people sometimes hear that's a derogatory term. It's not a compliment. It's all in my head, right? So I never use that phrase, but what is in your head is your brain. And without your brain, you don't feel anything. For example, if you go under an anesthetic to have an operation, you're asleep. You don't feel anything at all because your brain is asleep. So all sensations are processed in the brain, whether they be a broken leg that hasn't healed well, or whether they be an inflammatory condition in your back, or whether they be a bulging disc, or whether they be a muscle spasm, which is a very common cause of, of chronic pain, they're all processed ultimately in the brain. The brain is also processing as a human being, in addition to the sensations from the body, it's also processing emotions. And those emotions are both the emotions that we're experiencing that day, like I'm having a nice day, or my boss screamed at me, I'm kind of feeling really anxious right now. It's also processing those, those emotions in the context of the person you were at age two, age five, and age 12. And so those experiences seem to linger. You know, there's been a lot of research on what's called adverse childhood experiences. It relates to the issue of emotional trauma. There's a term ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. And it turns out that people who have a high ACEs score, meaning that they had more trauma, both big T and little t trauma, we'll go over what those are, as a child, are much more likely to experience a variety of illnesses in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, many decades later, not only including chronic pain, but even things like diabetes and high blood pressure are more common when you have childhood traumas, which can include things like divorce, which can include a parent who was put in jail. It can include obviously physical, psychological, and sexual abuse of various types, but it can also include bullying. It could also include other issues that are smaller T traumas rather than big T. So we believe the, all of these things affect us in terms of how the brain works and how the brain responds to stimuli. You know how some people can kind of gung-ho, gung go for it, uh, go out there and try a new sport or try a new activity. Other people are more timid, more shy. And you know we're all obviously very different genetically, different personalities. We also have different childhood experiences, which may make us more or less willing to try new things or to be open to new experiences. And so those are just examples I'm giving of how childhood affects us many years and decades later, and how it can also affect us in terms of our experience of illness or pain. Thank you for explaining this. And I think that it's very important that we acknowledge and really talk about that big T trauma is no more um, effective on what we are experiencing now as small T trauma, because sometimes people are like, well, you know what? My childhood wasn't so bad. I mean, I didn't ex experience anything so bad. So why am I suffering right now? But it might be something that for one person is a small thing for our psychology might be something very big. Would you agree? Absolutely. You know, there's, there's experiences in childhood that pull you down and there's also experiences that can pull you up. So for example, there's people who have, unfortunately, not great parents or not, not attentive parents, but maybe there's a grandparent or there's an uncle or there's a teacher or a coach who gives them that, that help and that mentoring and that, and that self-esteem that they really need growing up. So sometimes, you know, you're not, not everyone is blessed with the best circumstances, but you can, you can move beyond that especially with the help of other people, or if you get to adulthood with the help of trauma work and psychotherapy and EMDR and other techniques that are used to help you work through those things. But the key thing, the key lesson from the standpoint of my talk or my experience is that these things are relevant to your health when I talk to you about them in the office today, not just you know 
relevant 10 years ago or 20 years ago. They're really important now. Yes. Now, before you slightly touched in regards to the, well, slightly, you talked about emotions quite a bit now, but can we go a bit deeper into what is actually emotional, how is emotional pain processed and also how is it creating this sensation physically? Okay. Well, those are, those are very good questions. Let me, let me start with what we call the type T personality. So the type T personality is uh, the characteristics that many people have who suffer from chronic pain, the mind body syndrome, TMS, what we're talking about today. So for example, individuals who are very hard on themselves, often perfectionist, people pleaser, sensitive to how others perceive them, highly responsible for other people, sometimes not so responsible for themselves in terms of taking care, but, and some people are goodists, which means that they want to fix the world, the broken world, but it's really hard to fix when you're just one person and it can really drag you down. So having one or more or several of these characteristics, we believe leads to more pressure and tension. And so the type T personality, these aren't bad characteristics to have. You'd probably want to have a friend or a partner who had many of these characteristics, uh, not all of them necessarily, but responsible you'd want. Goodist is not so bad but they put a lot of pressure on you. And the, the pressure and tension probably makes the autonomic nervous system, the fight and flight response more, more active or more set to go. So the, the fight and flight response is designed inside of us to protect us when an animal comes racing after us to eat us, you know, so we can run away from it or we can fight it or we can fight a, another tribe that comes after us in ancient times. It's built into our DNA, if you will. But in the modern world, we don't have an animal running after us. We don't have a tribe attacking us very often. And so the fight and flight response should be quieter most of the time. But unfortunately, the stimuli of social media and the hush, rush, rush environment that we're in impacts us and connects to our personality and how we respond to things to create a hyper aroused autonomic nervous system, which we believe contributes to the physiology of chronic pain. And that's why lowering the fear of what's wrong with you, which is one of the things that I work on with patients, reducing the fear, often completely not correct fear, false fear, that you're going to end up in a wheelchair or you're going to end up being in chronic pain for the rest of your life, or you're going to end up staying on medication for the rest of your life. These types of fears and worries, if I can work to get a patient to give up those fears and worries, and I can get them to tone down their type T personality, not change it, but just tone it down a little bit, then we see tremendous progress in their physical sensations and, and overall well-being.